All right. It's good to be back with you today. And I am grateful to God for the service experience thus far. Thank God for that incredible opening prayer. Thank God for the spirit-led worship. And we thank God for the heartfelt intercession that just eaved this message that is coming through now. The Lord continues to speak to us throughout this entire season. And if you look at each of the portions of the service, you would see that there are confirmatory messages even in the middle of every segment. And that is the clear evidence that the Lord is with us and that he wants us to understand his heartbeat as it pertains to this new phase and this new realm that his church, the prevailing and the borderless church, has been ushered into by grace. You see, uh, year one was foundational and the foundation laying. Year two was our year of ascent, where we are risen by grace to meet with him where he is. Understanding that our place is to be seated with Christ in the heavenly places far above principalities and powers. And that was year two. Year three, as by the inspiration of the Lord, as I have communicated to you, is our year of perfect alignment. So in other words, rough edges are going to have to go. You know, crooked paths are going to have to get straightened out. You know, uh, the parts that create uncertainty and or are bots, B-U-T. You know, the, the commas and the bots in our lives are going to have to get smoothened out. And the Lord said in his word, when it was describing the prerequisite demonstrative actions that David had to take before he could bring down Goliath, every single step was intentional. And every word in scripture, as I have explained to you over the years, is massively intentional. So you see that the Bible says David picked five smooth stones, not five stones, not five random rocks, not five little pebbles. No, David picked and selected five smooth stones. The Bible had to specifically mention that the stones were smooth. You know, I perceive very strongly even by the Spirit of the Lord God Almighty, that this year three, the Lord is perfectly aligning our path. He is smoothing our lives and our destinies out. He is making crooked parts of our life straight so that we will not miss the glory that is ahead. I pray that as the God of heaven continues to help us, even through this inspired series on the model church, the model church, like I explained to you at the beginning of year three, when we began this series in the beginning of July last month, I explained to you that the model church must be a church that is perfectly aligned with God, his ways, his heart, his will, the spirit and his moves per time. Of course, the word of God is the greatest aligner of all lives and all destinies and that's the reason why we are dwelling on the word of god going literally as dense as we possibly can go studying the book of the acts of the apostles really the acts of the holy spirit but through the apostles and so today by the grace of god we're going to continue from where we stopped last week and we will trust the holy spirit to grant us grace grant us life revelationally gra grant us impact seismic that will transform us to the extent that we are modeled after perfect alignment in the will of God. Before we go into the text of focus for today, I want to invite you to please join me in prayer. <laughs> Father, we love you and we thank you. It is a joy, a delight, a privilege, an absolute honor to be named by you. <laughs> To be called your own to belong to you thank you for the privilege of adoption thank you because i can cry above 
Father, and I will mean every word, and it will register with you. Father to child, spirit to spirit. Thank you for the privilege of intimacy. Thank you for the gift of access. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, the one who guides us into all truth, and the one who has been teaching us through this incredible series on the model church. Holy Ghost, we are going again into another realm, another episodic part of your teaching. Put your word in my mouth, I pray. Let me not speak of my own logic. Let me not speak of my own thoughts. Let me have free flow and let me cooperate with you so that the people of God might be mightily blessed and that the grass might be green even to their edification and their feeding and even to the blessings of the messenger as well. Please do this, Lord, to the glory of your name alone. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. We began Acts chapter number two last week. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to be continuing with the book of Acts chapter two. I believe last week, God was gracious with us and gracious to us. He helped us to go through Acts chapter two and verse one. We spoke about the fullness of the day of Pentecost coming. We spoke about the suddenly move of God. We spoke about the fact that the move of God is heralded by a sound. Mm. We spoke about the fact that uh, indeed it is the year of the wind and the rushing mighty wind is always a staple in any model church. Mm. We spoke about the fact that it filled all the house, even where they were sitting. That's verse two. And then we spent some time speaking about verse 3, which was the cloven tongues as a fire and how that it sat upon each one of them. And then verse 4, which is really the very concluding part of last week, but also the beginning of this Sunday's teaching, speaks about the fact that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance so i'm going to go from verse 4 as we push today by the grace of god please stay with me follow me follow that which god is saying through me avoid every distraction turn off whatever it is that might be competing with the mind share of god in you give god your absolute undivided attention so that it might profit you that which the lord is passing through today as a message I don't want you to snooze so that you would not lose. I don't want you to blink so that you would not miss. This is one of those series that you have to keep on following line by line, precept upon precept, breath by breath, even as the Zoe word of life comes forth. Hallelujah. So let's go to verse 4 of the chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, KJV. Oh, makes me want to dance. After the cloven tongues of fire, I told you last week, fire announces dispensations that are new. Mm. This is the eighth month of the year, and it is our month of new beginnings as we move into this new realm of perfect alignment. Fire will mark us as it marked Isaiah when coals of fire were placed on his mouth. Mm. Every ministry and department in the Prevalent and the Borderless Church is marked by the fire of God's spirit. And then this is what happens after that happens. Verse 4. And they were all filled. All, 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 all. Not some. Not part of them. All. This spirit of Jesus is for all. The promise is to everyone. And it shall come to pass, Joel chapter 2, in those days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All, all. God is generous like that. All means all. And they were all in PBC filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen? And we were all in PBC. <laughs> the 
pastor, the stewards, the ministers, the workers, the HODs, and all of that, filled with the Holy Ghost. All of us members, hubs, regionally, globally, filled with the Holy Ghost. All of us. The model church that will be in perfect alignment must be a church that is filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. And the promise is to everyone, to all who believe in his name. John 1, 12. Yes. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And because they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, there has to be evidential symptoms uh, that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Do not be drunk in wine, we are in excess. Scripture. But rather be filled with the Holy Ghost. What is your content will determine your countenance. Hmm. The degree of the substance that is in your within will absolutely determine the manifestations of the behavior that will be outward. I can tell what you are within by what you are without. I can tell the capacity of what you are feeding by the level of manifestations you are displaying. I can tell the behavior of a person by the evidential realms of what is within them. So therefore, it follows that when a man or a woman is drunk with alcohol, with liquor, they begin to stagger. There is evidential traits uh, that, that there is an inebriation going on. They are inebriated. They, they, they are drunk. They, uh, they can't walk straight in a line. It's one of the litmus tests that the police uses to check whether your, 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 your blood alcohol level is higher than normal. You're a little bit off balance. You're staggering. It's an evidential symptom uh, that you are filled with something. Something has so laid in your container that it is beginning to affect even your display outwardly. In the same vein, it is not possible to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we would not know. No, it's not the Holy Ghost that you're filled with. If a church is filled with the Holy Ghost, a life, a servant of God, a believer, a child of light, a kingdom citizen, Anyone that is filled, and I mean filled, oh yeah, with the Holy Ghost, there will be evidence. Kavava, liaraga, There will be evidence. Joy, peace, righteousness, that the longings for the presence of Yeshua proves dimensions, radical faith, boldness, audacity. Oh God, these are a like of a baby. Can I pray that there will be evidential manifestations of the fact of what is filling you up? Even as by the Spirit of grace. And verse 4. They, the church, the model church, PBC, were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. As a result of being filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to do something. Mm. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, capital S, gave them utterance. This is a proof, perfect proof in Scripture that the Holy Ghost is the same as the Holy Spirit. Many theologians will begin to argue themselves into a corner and twist themselves into a pretzel saying well is there any biblical proof that the holy ghost is the holy spirit you know how do you how can you justify this uh, the holy ghost in the hebrew is roach elohim which is the breath of god the wind of god the spirit of god how do you explain that he's called the holy ghost and where's the proof that he's called the holy ghost and also the holy spirit well Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 is your answer to them they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with all the tongues as the spirit that same ghost 
that is holy is the same spirit that is holy so therefore uh, the Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. The proof is Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Somebody needs to type that. Holy Ghost equals Holy Spirit. Into parenthesis, Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Holy Ghost equals Holy Spirit. Proof, Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. KJV. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit Give them utterance. It could have said as the ghost. Give them utterance, but it says spirit, which wants us to know that the Holy Spirit is the same as the Holy Ghost. They can be used interchangeably across scripture and also in our lives. So when you cry, Holy Ghost, you and I will change the world. You're speaking the truth. When you say, Holy Spirit, I look unto you. Help me, I have no power of my own you're speaking of the same exact godhead and the figure ha glory be to god let's continue to verse 5 of acts chapter 2. Hmm. as a result of the speaking in all the tongues <laughs> and the outward manifestation of the inward feeling <laughs> There were dwelling at Yerushalmi, Jerusalem, at the time. Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. My God, the gospel is to all. The model church must preach this gospel to every nation, every creed, every kind, every race. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not for a limited few. It's not for whites, it's not for blacks. It's not for Browns. It's not for Hispanic Americans. It's not for Latinos. It's not for African Americans. It's not for Africans. It's not for Caribbean folks. It's not for Caucasians. It's not for Asians. It's not for uh, the Mongoloids. It's not for... It's for everybody. Every nation. Every creed. Every race. Under heaven. The model church must ensure that the gospel of Jesus Christ reaches the ends of the earth. And they were dwelling at Yerushalmi, Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. There's a borderless commission, a borderless flow, a borderless manifestation, a borderless outpouring. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Ooh. And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. Ah, and the fruitful field becomes a forest. Until, 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 until there is a time where our day of Pentecost fully comes. <laughs> and then we are marked with fire. Mm. The mighty wind of God blows through with us. The Holy Spirit fills us up. There is evidential manifestations. Instantly, the neighborhoods and the surroundings must know that there has been an impact in your life. That's verse 5. The church that will not impact its neighborhood is not a model church. The church that will not impact its street it's not a model church. Mm -mm. If you are a church and sin abounds around your axis, you have to cry to God, are we really being filled with the Holy Ghost? If you are a church and your neighborhood and your vicinity has not been captured for the Lord, in, are you really filled with the Holy Ghost? You are a church, you're just not a model church. You are a church, genuine church of Christ, you're just not a model church of Christ. Just like there are children and then there are model children. Hmm. God help us. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Hmm. <laughs> Verse 6. This gets good. Now, when the evidence that a people have been captured by the Holy Ghost and filled with the Spirit, and they are beginning to manifest outward demonstrations and displays of said power. <laughs> hey, verse 6. Now, when this, the power of God at work, and the manifestations of the display of the Spirit's work in you, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. I thank God for Instagram. I thank God for Facebook. I thank God for paid ads. 
I thank God for uh, the publicity mechanisms that exist today. And we must use every single one of those to our advantage. We must use every single ounce of technology. And we do unapologetically as a church. Selectively, we boost specific videos. Yes. If we're trying to get to, God has been gracious to us because of the incredible subscription that God has blessed us with. By the grace of God, our videos on average, average about a thousand, you know, a thousand, three hundred, a thousand, five hundred, a thousand, six hundred, almost two thousand views unaided. However, when we want to really get to massive, you know, audiences, where we're trying to get to eight thousand people, five thousand plus people, ten thousand people, we will boost. And there is no reason to be scared or worried about that or ashamed. No, the Lord gave his word. Great is the company of they that publish it. So let's publish all the way through. If physical and brick and mortar churches can print flyers, which is paid for, if they can do billboards, which is paid for, then we, the virtual hybrid online church, we should be able to boost, pay for online publicity so that people can hear the glorious gospel of the eternal truth. Yes, unapologetically at all. No shame. I will boost yet some more for the glory of our King. God has helped us. He has grown his church in leaps and bound in subscription. So the aftermath watchings and the replays gathers its own regular run review views. But if you want to get to thousands plus, we have to boost. But there is a mechanism that is even better than social media postings. <laughs> Look at the template of how crowds come. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. The best way to pull crowd to see the manifest glory of God is that the church will ensure that they are filled, not partially full, but filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if the Holy Ghost comes upon a person, the world will look for such a person. Mm. Oh Lord. It's the trusted way. The multitude came together and were confounded meaning they were dazed at this manifest glory of god because that every man heard them speak in his own language the customized demonstrative display of the great commission bespoke and tailor fitted for every individual that we find that is what we see here so the model church must ensure that its message is by the spirit of grace being translated being released even onto the specific nature tailor-made to the specific language and the locality that it finds itself in. That's why I'm trusting God very soon to bring us a Hispanic speaker who can ensure that our messages and our services by the grace of God ah, will begin to be get translated in Spanish because our current Yerushalmi Jerusalem here as PBC is the United States and the United States is becoming fast bilingual so I want by the grace of God some of our messages that we put online you know to be both in English and in Spanish uh, that way people can be edified and we are not missing out on the Hispanic community by the grace of God God will grant us that desire because it is in attempt it is in keeping with his will for his kingdom may the lord bring the people that will power this church to the next level by grace in the name of jesus christ can i get an amen even as members of the church append your amen with me in the name of jesus christ amen now when this was noised abroad the six uh, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language verse 7 <laughs> and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? In other words, what is this marvel we are seeing? Psalm 71 and verse 7. Psalm 71 and verse 7. The model church, because of the capturings of the workings of the Spirit, is as a wonder unto many. It's difficult to understand and explain away uh, the grace of God at work in the model church. Just the same way by the grace of God, people cannot really quite understand what's going on in PBC. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. A positive mystery. Psalm 71 verse 7, KJV. I am as a wonder unto many. Why? Because thou, O God, are my strong refuge. In the same way, another word for wonder is marvel. Marvel. Like something that makes you just marvel. That's where you get the word marvelous, meaning all-wondering, all-inspiring, all-commanding. It is shocking. It's amazing. It's, it's, it leaves you in awe. The 
they were all amazed and moral, saying one to another, Behold, and not all these which speak Galileans. In other words, how can Galileans be able to speak in languages that command the specific address of nations under heaven gathered in Jerusalem at that time? It can only be that they've been filled with someone and this is the Holy Spirit that is giving them an unusual, supernatural, extraordinary power. The Church of Christ that is a model church that is filled with the Holy Spirit in that church, uh, the supernatural will become natural. The extraordinary will become ordinary. Yes. Strength will become place. <laughs> My God. They were all amazed. Who is amazed by the workings of God in your life? If your life is not yet as a wonder to people, it must mean that you are not yet fully, fully filled. Your content is very small of the Holy Spirit. You need to go for refilling. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? Customized address of the Spirit of God at work in the life of a model church. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Marys and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, which is modern day Iran, certain parts of Iran, and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia and Phrygia and Marys and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome. The Jews and the proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. My God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth these? What meaneth all of these? Now, I want to focus on verse 11 as I begin to close for today's teaching. One of the greatest purposes of any model church that is walking in perfect alignment with the spirit of grace and the spirit of Jesus Christ is that the entirety of that church almost exists to declare the manifest wonderful works of God. The model church does not exist for themselves. They exist for their husband. For thou art created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So you see, the model church that is powered by the Holy Spirit must exist only to the end that Jesus Christ is glorified through all that they do, their words, their messages, the worship, the prayers, the testimonies, uh, the outreaches, the commissions, the revival gatherings that they organize and hold and steward. Everything they do must be to the end that the wonderful works of God are displayed and manifested to the glory of the King. The Holy Spirit is the greatest marketer in the entire world and the Holy Spirit markets only one entity Jesus the Christ let me conclude do you want to be a part of this model church whereby your life comes as a one down to many there is a way there is a way and it's going to be my duty and my joy and my delight to explain to you that way right now please pay attention to me if you do not yet know Jesus Christ, it's not possible to receive the Holy Spirit. If you've not yet received the Holy Spirit, your life is limited. It will never be as a wonder. There will never be manifest supernatural works in your life. It will be difficult for you to declare the wonderful works of God without the Holy Spirit. But there is a way to get this Holy Spirit. And you must first receive the one who gives the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And that is Jesus the Christ. Perhaps you've been living your life on your own terms, seen as being your order of the day. You've been sort of rebellious to anything that has to do with God. You've never really given God a second thought. You command your own destiny, you think. I want you to know that you're on the wrong path. 
and I'm saying that in all love and in all truth. There is a way that cement right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. But then there is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father except through the door that is Jesus Christ. So it will be my joy to lead you to know the Lord. Just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come before you just as I am without a plea. I recognize that your blood was shed for me. I admit it. I acknowledge it. I believe it. I confess my sins before you. I repent of them. And by your grace, I forsake them. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I confess with my mouth that he is my savior. Please come into my life. Help me to begin to find my way. Show me, O oh Lord, the path of everlasting life. Write my name in the book of life. Please don't let me go. I believe I am saved to the glory of your name. Amen. If you said those prayers just like that, you are saved. There's a link right now in the chat box. Please click on that link. It will bring you into a quick, very short form. Once you fill that form out, we will bring you into an academy of discipleship, away from the public eye. And then we can begin to grow together in love, in truth, in healthy disciplines according to the similitude of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you realize your life is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then everything about you will change to the glory of his name. God bless you. Welcome home. Welcome home. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy the rest of today's service. And please remember to sow, give cheerfully. Hang out with Jesus is coming up in but a few short weeks. The Lord needs your partnership, all right? It's going to a great cause incredibly noble and righteous cause. God be with you and God establish you. Amen.